Have you ever wondered how to start a successful side hustle while juggling a nine to five? Well, if you've asked yourself that question, you're about to get the answer because Arlington, Texas based entrepreneur Tracy Lynn Jackson, she's going to tell you how she does it. Tracy's also going to share some some practical tips, things she's learned about starting a profitable business. And that is all up next right here on Over 50 TV. Welcome back to Over 50 TV. My name is Lou Reyes. Well, as I said before that break, I'm about to introduce you to Tracy Lynn Jackson. She's the owner of an event company. It's called Events by Odyssey. They're a planning and a decorating company. Now, Tracy's also the author of a book called Seed, How a Business Begins with a God-Given Idea. And that book, by the way, is available on Amazon. Now, Tracy's talent, her talent for helping people reach their goals, it's truly what drives her to, to find innovative ways to support new business owners, and it's one of the reasons that I asked her to come on this program today. In her latest role as host of an expo that highlights businesses like hers, Tracy's aim is to promote these businesses and boost their bottom line. Welcome to Over 50 TV, Tracy. Thank you so much, Lou. I am so glad you are here. I, and I got to tell you, after we talked, uh, what was it, a few months ago, maybe even longer than that, I, 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 I left the call being inspired by you. And I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, if anything, there's a lot of reasons to be inspired by, by what you're doing in your journey. But this whole idea of working nine to five and then launching a business, I mean, well, well I guess, first of all, tell us about your business before I ask you how you do it. Yes. So I am an event decorator and event planner. Mm -hmm. I have been, and this might go into another question that you may have, but what got me here is that I was, I was a florist for 12 years plus. Wow. And between being a florist for other companies and operating my own business, I have been in the wedding industry for that long, for at least 20 years. Um, I went away from it did my other things that I was doing mm -hmm. and then came back to it because I love the industry. I love the event industry. It's a wonderful industry to be in. Sure. You get to be creative. And at the same time, you're helping someone to celebrate their event and, the, and their milestones. So it's a wonderful thing. Um, that's how I became, that's how I came to do what I do now. So, so you're working a full-time gig though, right? You're working a full-time job. Yes, I am nine to five. Yes. <laughs> how do you how do you do your job? You know, how, how are you able to focus on, on, on the side gig? Because I know it's it's got to be tough. It is a challenge at times, but my evenings, because I am an over 50 entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, my children are grown. I have grown children, three children, a son and two daughters. And then I have grandchildren and no one is in the house with me. Uh, it's me and my husband. And yeah. so I'm able to utilize my time outside of the nine to five for my business. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I do. I, I'll Whatever I have to do, I do it in the evenings. I come home from work and, and I'll go straight to my office or I'll actually go to another location just so that I can concentrate. Because sometimes home is for home <laughs> and you want to be at home. Yeah. And so then yeah. I'll find another place where I can go and concentrate and do work. And then on the weekends also is what I do uh, my business, um, especially actually setting up for events that yeah. normally happens on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. You know, I want to dive a little bit more into the business, but but first of all, into, into your event business. But first, I, you know, one of the things that a lot of folks tell me here at Over 50 TV when they write in or they comment or emails, they'll say, you know, I don't have time to do um, I don't have time to do a side hustle, Lou. What, what would you say to someone who says that to you? You don't, they don't have the time. Well, you have to make the time if you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are early morning people and then a lot of people are late night people. So mm -hmm. find that time when you are at your best. Even though I come home and do work at home after work, <laughs> do work at home after work. Yeah. Uh, my best times of the day is early in the morning when I wake up. Mm -hmm. So even in that time frame, you can use those times to to sit down and to do some work, to concentrate, to send out those emails, to make those connections. An email really won't bother someone at four in the morning. You can still yeah. send it and you're yeah. not 
disturbing anyone. So it's a, it's a good time to send emails early in the morning. You know, that's some real practical advice. And it's something that I know, but I rarely articulated. I'm glad you answered that because I thought you might say, well, if you really, if you really want something, you're going to work for it, which is true too. But I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you got to find the best time for you, the time that you work the best. Absolutely. So listen, so tell me exactly like what's like a typical day for you in your in your business? Well, when I go to work, um, I do will tell you that I work for um, a nonprofit and I get the opportunity to work with adults with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So I love my job. I love what I do. We have a good time and it's for a great cause. And so I have a job that's fulfilling. I'm blessed with that. A lot of people don't have that. You know, I know yeah. some of your viewers may not have a job that they actually enjoy, <laughs> but I do. I have that and I'm blessed. Yeah. Uh, but I go to work and I do that. I'll come home and I actually do keep um, a pretty, pretty tight calendar. Yeah. I have other obligations that I have to do during the week. I am involved in my church. And mm -hmm. so I have to I have to teach choir. I have to wow. study music in order to do that. Um, so a lot of things will actually overlap. So mm -hmm. at work, I may have some time during my lunch break and I'll use that time to send an email or to, to craft my workflow for my email sequence or whatever I need to do. I can do that. I'm sorry for that. I can do that on my lunch break. So oh, that's another thing that someone can do if they're trying to work a nine to five and yet start and run a business. Um, but then I'll come home. I have to do whatever I do. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's basically just keeping that calendar, making sure on Wednesdays, I have that dedicated for this. Mm -hmm. On Thursdays, this is dedicated for that. Um, so keeping a calendar really does help. So you're highly organized, it sounds like. I, I work on it. I, I you know, I live, I am eliminating the word try. So yeah. I won't say I'm trying. I'm yeah. working on that. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you too, though, what are some of the other challenges that you, that you face? I, I, I'm, I'm curious about that. I, I mean, it seems like you got, you're working on the time, you, you know, to work when your body tells you that it's best to focus on this, but what, what could be some other challenges that you face as an, as an entrepreneur? Well, I'll tell you, as a person, a woman over 50, mm -hmm. uh, there are some health challenges. Mm -hmm. And I've put myself in this place so I don't make any excuses for anything. But you actually, health is a part of your success plan. Yeah. If health is not a part of your success plan, then you are doing yourself a disservice and actually probably setting yourself up for failure because your health should be the hub that the wheel turns on. Mm -hmm. Everything should be centered upon your health and your well-being. So, um, so I did change my diet, and I'm eating a lot better than I have, even though my husband's losing more weight than I am. <laughs> so I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm not doing it for my weight, even though I, I want it to be a byproduct. Sure. But it's truly a byproduct. So my health has been a challenge for me, and making sure that I have the energy to do what I'm doing. A lot of times I don't, or I haven't when I was eating poorly, mm -hmm. I did not have the energy and slowly, but surely my energy level is coming up. It's not there yet. It's not yeah. there yet. I'm not, I'm not there, but I'm on my way and I'm working on it. And, and thank goodness I have had the success that I've had and I celebrate the milestones. And that's what you have to do. You have to celebrate the small things, the small yeah. accomplishments that you make. I find it interesting though, I'm listening to you and, and knowing all the stuff that you do and knowing that what you've done, I mean, we're always hard on ourselves. I mean, we're, we're driven people, you know, like you and me, we're driven. We want to, you know, do things, create things, build things, mm -hmm. but it's never, we're, we're very hard on ourselves. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to be a little bit easier on yourself and mm -hmm. I'm, I am my worst critic. I really am. Mm -hmm. But I also do try to encourage myself yeah. and like I said, celebrate the small milestones that I, that I reach. Mm -hmm. And, um, I used to, I used to reward myself with ice cream, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's a good reward. Right. That, that's, that's not, a great reward. 
That's not healthy, though. It's not healthy. It's not good. So I stopped doing that. But but I still (laughs) give myself an encouraging word, a pat on the back. Thank goodness I got that done. Okay, awesome. Great. Let's get some more done. I want to know a little bit more about your business. Now, you have a rental business and an expo. And I, you have an expo, I believe, that that's coming up. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So my business in and of itself is a, is a decor business. Mm-hmm. And I also do planning. Mm-hmm. Um, my decor is mainly backdrops. So when you see the draping or you see the gold uh, right. shimmer walls or the flower walls, I, mm-hmm. I love to do those things. And I do have those things for rent as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, we are, it kind of dropped in my, in my soul to do an expo and the expo is unique in that it deals with the event industry. So there's a lot of wedding mm-hmm. expos out there, Sure. but my expo is not only focused on weddings, but all types of events. So children's parties, if, if you're a clown, you know, if, if you're, if you do face painting for kids parties, if you have inflatables. Um, if you do catering and baking and all of the things for events, that is this expo. This expo encompasses all of that. So it's bigger and better than just a wedding expo. And then wow. and then it is also unique in that it is focused or shining the spotlight on Black-owned businesses. Mm-hmm. So the vendors that we're seeking out, um, they are Black-owned businesses. Um, you don't have to have the M. MBE, w, WBE, you don't have to have the designations, sure. um, but it has to be at least 50% black owned. And we're doing that because as an event vendor myself, I have seen some disparities out there mm-hmm. um, in the industry when it comes to expos, when you're in an expo and you're in an expo with everyone, then a lot of times you get overlooked and because people will go to what they're familiar with. Sure, they are. Sure. And so we're bringing together excellence in the event industry, which happen to be black owned businesses, Mm -hmm. uh, for people to come and they get the chance to see these businesses kind of spotlighted in away from everyone else. So it's it's really focusing on that uh, demographic. Now the attendees, we would love everyone to be there. Please sure. come. Um, sure. But our vendors will be uh, at least 50% owned, uh, black owned businesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I like the niche and that's what you've done is, you know, a lot of times folks will just jump into a business and then just jump in the same pool that everybody else is swimming in. And what yeah. you're doing is you niched it and you're focusing yeah. on an area that you're familiar with and, and an area where there's a heck of a lot of talent. I mean, I, I know Absolutely. that for sure. So yeah. much talent, so much. So how does yeah. somebody, if, if they want to find out more about your, your expo, where, where would they find out or get information? Okay, we have a website. It's uh, onyxexpos.com, so it's plural. And you spell that O-N-Y-X-E-X-P-O-S.com. You can go yeah. there. The very first page is the Wedding and Event Expo, and you can find out everything if you want to attend or if you want to be a vendor. All the information is there. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. You are all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. I'm, almost <laughs> trying to be. I'm working on it. No, I'm glad you are. It's important, especially when you're, you know, you're, you're doing what a lot of folks, uh, you know, kind of like just don't want to jump into, you know, they don't want to try to do that nine to, you know, that, that mm. nine to five grind and then do something else. So is there anything, any last message that you want to give the viewers here? Definitely. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, it's not too late for you. The first thing I want to say, it is not too late. And a lot of you, you feel like the window has closed on you. And this is where my passion really lies. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here too. Right here. Yes. Listen, listen, sis, sir, it is not too late. Whatever is in you is still in you. Now, Mm -hmm. it's only too late if you cannot physically do anything. Then I understand. Um, And I'm praying for you and I pray for, for your spirits to be encouraged. But if you can physically get up and do something, then it's not too late. Go for your dreams. 
Go for the goal. Whatever it is that has been in your mind and your heart, chances are it's been placed there and it's been placed there by God. Mm -hmm. And it is your duty to get it out into the world. And so the, the book that I wrote, Seed, How a Business Begins with mm -hmm. a God-Given Idea, I believe that every everything, every invention, everything that is out here was planted into the mind. It started here in the mind of someone. And I believe it was given by God. Now, different inventions have been used for evil, but I don't think the intention was to be evil. So yeah. there, there, there is something in you that you are supposed to do, that you are supposed to plant and and cultivate and cause to grow and bring forth fruit for the world. And it's there to help someone else. So whatever is given to you, it's there to help someone else. So go for it, do it, start. If, if, if you feel like it's not too late, I'm telling you, <laughs> do it, <laughs> start today, start right now. And you can do it. You can make it. Tracy, thank you for those words, because that's something that I say all the time, you know, here at Over 50 TV, because I believe it. It's not too late. And you just articulated it better than I could ever do. So I, I want to thank you again for that. Yes, sir. Tracy, thank you very much for coming on. And I am so happy that you were here. And I'm going to make sure that I also include a link to your website in the description box. And then if you have anything else that you want me to, to let folks know about, just let me know and I'll be sure to put it in that uh, in the description box. That's all I got for you. And I'm so glad, like I said, you're here. Tracy, thank you once again. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>